That is absolutely delicious. Oh, sorry, this is chicken yassa. It's a Senegalese dish. Hello, people. Well, it's sort of like an interesting week. Uh, there's a recipe for the chicken yassa I'm eating, which you can have a look at. This time, I'm making something I've made once, and um, I have the opportunity of sharing with um, what you call a very strong jury indeed, a group of chefs. And um, I got a kind of a, uh, I got kind of a pass mark, so I'm sort of I'm going to so I'm going to do it again today. It's uh, known as chicken yassa. It's a Senegalese chicken stew, which is going to be marinated in quite a lot of onions with lemon juice, uh, Dijon mustard, oil, uh, of course you can see the uh, bay leaf, uh, habanero and uh, garlic cloves there. So, and of course, quite a bit of uh, lemon juice to tenderize the chicken and it's going to be made into a stew tomorrow morning. So, prepare the marinade, put it in the fridge and let it stay there overnight. Then we'll continue from there. Okay, you can see that the prep has moved uh, slightly ahead. That's um, half a cup of lemon juice. That's the oil, salt. Of course, that's the chicken all chopped up. And now that's, those are the onions. That's almost like a kilogram of onions. And of course, we got the habanero, the yellow one, and the garlic. And we're about to make the marinade. And there you have it. You can see the chicken. <laughs> it looks interesting, doesn't it? Like, how on earth could you have this many, on, this much onions? It sort of looks like it's plenty, but everything is going to stew down, and it's going to be cooked tomorrow. After spending well, more than twelve hours in the fridge, I think we're now ready to cook. Separated the chicken from the onions using the, the, the kitchen tongs, and that's what we have. And we're about to brown that. And of course, there we go. Almost everything we need to finish cooking. Uh, yeah, that's it. Salt, pepper. In this case, I'm using Cameroon pepper. For just a little bit more of a kick, and um, chicken stock, oil. So let's get to it. Now we're browning the chicken. We're trying to get some color on the chicken bit of caramelization, all of that will add to the flavor of the final dish. As a turn of the onions now, place them in the pot, cook for about maybe five minutes, then we're going to cover and cook for a little while, and then join the happy family of chicken and onion marinade together. Now we brought back the chicken with the marinade. It takes about 20-25 minutes. Uh, for the chicken to be done, but of course you have to check um, that um, you know prick it with a slim knife or toothpick or something. If the juices run clear, then the chicken is done. And this is going to taste amazing. And yes, bring some rice, and frying some plantain to go with this amazing chicken yasa. You see the thing with the chicken yasa is that like any dish that's kind of stewed it gets better every day you live it alone in the fridge and this is like the third day after i made it and <laughs> it's ridiculously delicious all the flavors have merged together i had an interesting interview at the gym that i go to uh, with a very interesting chap in the fitness world that many of you would know. Here's what he had to say. Hello, people. <laughs> You're welcome back to the show. Uh, I have with me someone most of you probably know. Uh, this is Kemen Fitness, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how he keeps himself together. So your answer. Yeah. So I was asking about how you keep yourself together, how you achieve uh, food balance or dietary balance. Uh -huh. mm. So, you know, the, um, the whole concept of balanced diet uh, dates way back to where 
we were in the primary school where they taught us what the balanced diet is <laughs> <laughs> you know having a meal that has all the necessary vitamins and minerals in, in, in it and just being able to have the combination of of carbs, protein, fats, um, vegetables and fruits. Yeah. So um, in as much as I'd love to tell you the lot the um, beautiful thing about dieting, the different kinds of dieting techniques that I really wouldn't say because that's not what I practice. I just practice um, trying to eat a complete meal every time I eat. I eat my three square meals. I snack in between. I but I do a lot of portion control. And I'm not the really very perfect kind of eater because I indulge sometimes. I am an occasional drinker and sometimes I go overboard with my diet. But something I do is accountability. I'm a, I'm a, I am accountable for the days where I go overboard. So for example, days I, go, I eat late nights, for me, I just decide to do a six hours fast the next day, drink a lot of water, and then I realize that by the next day, I'm like, almost back to normal and also sometimes because I'm a personal trainer uh, we have I have lots of clients that I barely find time to work out for example I wake up like 4 a.m. and uh, I hit the gym because my first client is for 5 and I do back to back from 5 to 12 noon sometimes I wow sometimes I don't eat and uh, which is not too good so I decided to start packing my breakfast so I can eat in between before I finish with my clients by 12. I go home. I also try to find a balance with rest. So when I get home by one, I shower, um, have another meal, turn off my phone, like put it on silence, and I sleep for at least two hours. Nice. Because I can't have my eight hours sleep in the night. Since I sleep sometimes by 10, 11, I need to wake up by four. So I try to balance it up with an afternoon nap. So when I wake up by say three, four, I do other things, meetings, write, read, because by six I have to be back at the gym to do back to back again with clients tonight. Sometimes I sacrifice my sleep a little bit, maybe by an hour to work out, because I don't want to become a slave to my knowledge, which is what happens with most coaches, um, uh, most personal trainers. One of the challenges they have, but we all have as personal trainers, is when we uh, spend a lot of our time trying to find money trying to help other people look good and stay in shape and we forget that we also need to look good and stay in shape mm. um, well at some point you master your body you know how to play with your food that you don't get or what happens to your, your cardiovascular endurance that is supposed to be in check every day so you realize that you might go through the week for one month and you've not gone on a treadmill to run or done anything high cardio to just you know get you to to raise your heart rate and just so you keep your body in check until maybe you now find that client that is a, a next military or an athlete <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you realize that oh boy God, I just I just I just played myself yeah so um, so that's how I try to find my balance between work personal life and uh, just like Paul said in the Bible that you know I don't want to run aimlessly or box uh, or punch like a boxer that is boxing into the air. Yes. I hit myself up, I beat myself up. So at the end of the day, I don't lead people into the kingdom and I am found wanting. Whoa! So, <laughs> Take it to church now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it is it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I don't want to just look good as a trainer. I want to feel good. I want to be able to lift as heavy as a power lifter, run as fast as an athlete. But when I put on this suit, I look like a GQ model. If you stayed this far, thank you for watching, and I know that was an interesting interview. Well, until the next time, when I'm going to bring you even more amazing content, remember to subscribe. See ya!